Live in Nashville, Tennessee. You are listening to the Nashville Daily Podcast. Nashville's number one daily podcast. Brought to you by Think Nashville. Think Nashville. Think Brad. Think Brad. It's Nashville Daily Podcast. Hey, Nashville. Welcome to the Nashville Daily Podcast. I am your co-host, Stuart Deming. Today's episode is brought to you by thinkbrad.com. If you're looking for real estate here in Middle Tennessee, contact him, 615-856-3270. Text him the longest hashtag possible and uh, make it all about Nashville food, particularly hot chicken. We have a full table today, folks. Uh, Joining me at the table is Aaron Pennington. You know who he is. Howdy. 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 Hi. Uh, also text, uh, text Brad along your longest hashtag, uh, using Opryland in there today. You'll see why here in just a second. Yeah. So also joining us at the table is a 3d artist, Ryan Crowder. Ryan, how you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me on guys. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. So what does it mean to be a 3d artist? <clears throat> well, um, it's, it's funny because artist isn't necessarily something I would have like self-assigned. But um, as uh, I kind of um, dove into this into this field of, uh, of 3D design, learning a program called Blender. It's an open source program, so anybody can download it and modify it. It's uh, completely free, and it can do some amazing things. So, Ryan, you are in here because uh, you have something really cool and a unique project that is going on. You are recreating, well, I guess creating... Opryland in the VR space. Um, I think this is a really cool project. Um, found you on social media, uh, and I think it's really cool that uh, y- your page is, is very fun. Um, tell us about this project and how this concept really came to be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the project started uh, really as just kind of a just kind of a hobby like i was i was really just trying to learn 3d like i thought it would be fun to get into the into the game design world and so i thought you know what what's a game that i want to see what what should if i were to to create anything like i have this tool i've got all of these skills i can i can make anything i want to what what do i want to see out of a vr experience and um and i had also uh, i had been doing a little bit of uh, design in a different game uh, before where I had recreated a, a scene from a, a camp I had worked at. And oh, cool. So that was kind of my thought. I was like, well, why don't I do something that's sort of familiar? And so that's where I decided to go with Opryland. So, you know, you talk about familiar. I think VR is very interesting. Uh, we have a video coming out on our YouTube channel, Explore.Nash, here in a little bit that uh, we explore the VR world at Rabbit Hole VR down in Franklin. And what's wild to me is you can create these scenes that people have never experienced before. And so well, the first time that Stuart and I were there, <laughs> we shot zombies that were trying to come into a church and attack us yeah, yeah. A, as a group. And then we played laser tag in this open, like, free roam arena. Uh, so it's this open area where you can run around and play laser tag and shoot zombies. It's Then we also did another game where it was... Um, the, this big like skull we had to shoot this skull multiple times but then you had to like dodge you had to dip. dodge these blocks uh, yeah, on, on it, a movie it was conveyor like, it was belt like thing. the movie dodgeball you're like dodge dip <laughs> dodge <laughs> but <laughs> with, with, with all of these things that in the possibilities for vr uh what really motivated you to do something that uh, i guess already existed um instead of maybe creating a new world from whole cloth yeah absolutely the so when um you know, when you drive through Nashville, and I, I'm not sure how long y'all have... Are, Both of us have been here for about 10 years. Oh, yeah. So y'all have seen definitely a lot of change in the yeah, past 10 yeah. years. Yes. Yeah. Um, and th- there's... It's um, it's just kind of my line in the sand against the, uh, you know, the hyper-development of our city. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, just kind of like a reminder. I wanted to remind the town of, of what we used to have and, and what we could even one day have again, but... Um, yeah, it was it was just really such a traumatic thing to to lose Opryland the way we did. With uh, it, it just it just happened so fast, and there was so much misinformation around it at the time. And of course, you know when when chaos like that's happening, it's it's hard to to pull the truth out of it. But um, 
yeah, looking back now, it's it's one of those things that we can really, you know, when you look at the mall and when you look at how much the town's changed, that's that's kind of one of the places that I, I feel like was was a major turning point for us mm. as a city. And because uh, the park closed in 1997, correct? Yes. Okay. And then, do you remember your first time ever going to the park? I don't remember my first time going to the park. Um, I have a pretty good picture of what I'm fairly certain was my last time at the park. Okay. Um, but uh, can you walk us through that experience? Oh, my last time at the park. Yeah. Uh, it's did, so. Did you know it was your last time at the park when you went? Oh yeah, I'm sure okay. I did. It was. That, that makes a difference. You, you can you can really see it in my face in the picture <laughs> as <laughs> as, a, as an eight year old, a nine year old kid. Mm, wow. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it's funny because like looking back on it, like I don't necessarily remember, like actually like, I mean, I do remember parts of the park as mm-hmm. like a, a physical place, but like, um, more what I remember is just like kind of the, a sadness, right. Just yeah. like the kind of, because, um, you know, that was, it was, uh, my dad's first job was working at the Opry house, driving, driving valet cars for the, for the Opry house. Okay. Mm. And so he worked, uh, then from there, he moved to the parking lot, uh, driving the trolleys for Opryland. Mm-hmm. And so then you guys got to experience it as kids with like, you know, most people, like when I was a kid after my parents were teachers. So I, after school, I would just walk down the hall and hang out at the school until, you know, the evening time for you, you got to do that, but with Opryland. Right. Yeah. More, more or less. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, we definitely spent just a ton of time there. I have like pictures of my, you know, my grand, my grandparents took me while I was there as like a you know really little baby. But, um, yeah, that, that was, um, as far as like, yeah, looking back on that, on that memory of it, that was, that was one of the things I kind of remember just like being still kind of like bummed out about it. Like, you know, the, the summer following the, the destruction of the park, you mm-hmm. know, just driving by, a big, you know, construction lot. And you just see a wrecking ball like hitting a roller coaster. <laughs> I, that's what I'm imagining. It's just this giant wrecking ball just knocking things down. Well, that's crazy. There's actually a video uh, taken of the last day of the park. Um, I believe Stephen Phillips was the man that, that okay. took that. He he used to run. He uh, he's passed away recently, but he he used to run a uh, a site called I believe he ran Thrill Hunter. Okay. okay. But yeah, there was a, a he had a big Opryland presence. So mm. he he had gone through the park on the last day that it was open with mm-hmm. a video camera, wow. and he has. I mean, it's really mm. probably some of the best footage I have. Is it uh, open source on like YouTube, or is it? Do it's, you have to, it's do on you have to buy that footage. It's on YouTube. The, okay. Um, his um, I believe his uh, son or stepson had had posted that okay yeah we'll try YouTube. linking that in the show notes yeah for that's really watch cool that. yeah yeah and and in that because he was a really big fan of uh chaos the ride the ride chaos the you know the indoor roller coaster not just chaos had. in general but the ride. right <laughs> <laughs> right um no that's me i'm a fan of chaos in general um but yeah the uh the roller coasters and and he, so he went into that roller coaster on the last day um you know, with this camera and there was already a crew and they're disassembling it. Wow. And oh my gosh. So they were, they were literally disassembling the park as people were still walking through it. That's crazy. Wow. That, that is very interesting. And so with that, those, those kind of core memories really locked in and that, you know, instead of saying, I'm going to just post mean things on Facebook about development, like I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to actually like create something that has some value that can show what that was like. And that's what we do is, I mean, you, you say that you don't really think of yourself as an artist, but that's what artists do. That's artists really take those things and create them into something that's tangible those feelings the that nostalgia that whatever it is we we take it and and create something that uh has some kind of meaning to it to somebody and so i think it's really cool um what you're doing in that regard when was the point when you were like going from idea to oh this may actually be really possible was it really hard to to kind of get that to that level where it's like from idea to, okay, I think this can actually be a, 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 a real thing. Yeah, absolutely. Because when, when I started, when I started the, um, when I started collecting data for everything before I ever started to create the first model for the park, I just was collecting pictures and videos and trying to organize all of it. Say like, uh, this picture was taken in the 
Riverside area. This picture was taken at Duodeti City. And so I just kind of like created folders and started pulling a bunch of pictures from the internet. How, how long were you research, re- researching for? Probably six months. I probably spent about, about two months, months okay, two before months. I before I really started on anything. Okay. And um, there were some really great maps drawn by a gentleman named Michael Parham, who uh, who runs the Opryland Memories Facebook group. Um, it's got like sixteen thousand people in it. And it's, uh, wow! Yeah, it's a great group. There's just a lot of can people join if they've never been. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. And if it, yeah, <laughs> the it seems question is like a trick question of like, <laughs> hey, what was uh, if you've been like, here's the, here's a quiz to make sure that you, we... that you actually went that, you know, but no, if, it, if it's open to, to people who haven't been, I think that's cool, too. Well, and, and uh, there in the group rules, it kind of talks about like, um, you know, not just getting on there and hating about the mall and stuff <laughs> like that. <laughs> so, um, so, but uh, yeah, the, so there's, it's kind of like a set of guidelines, but it's for people who are celebrating the memory of the park who either went or their family went and they have things they'd like to share. Nice. Uh, so you went from research to starting to build and what was that experience like building something that you've had these core memories with? Um, is it something I would imagine it's uh, VR you can get lost in anyway. Oh, right. But I can imagine you're building something that was a childhood staple. Was it something very easily, I mean, if that you could get lost in yourself? Well, and so a lot of the park, like I don't necessarily, I mean, I do remember a handful of areas very clearly, like very visually. Um, but uh, a lot of it, and going back to like how, how I've gone about building the park, um, because I was only there, you know, the last, you know, 10, eight years, eight or nine years that it was mm-hmm. open. Right. And so the, um, so when I'm, when I'm been going through trying to organize how I'm going to go about building the park, I decided to start in 1972 when the park opened mm-hmm. because it, oh, cool. it expanded from there twice. Yep. And so it really trims out my workload, um, not having to do the Grizzly River Rampage <laughs> and stay in yeah, yeah. area right now. So, yeah. um, some of those things are things that I remember the best. And so a lot of this is really, uh, very research based. And, um, and so there, there are these, it's kind of a lot of pressure too, because I know that there are people that do remember this place very vividly. Yeah. And so that was kind of, that was one of the most, probably, probably the most nervous I've been this entire process was when I put my dad in, in the custom environment for the first time where it loads up in front yeah, of the yeah, front yeah. gates of the park. Was he like in awe? Well, he, he, he was, he, um, he was impressed with how, how, how well the scale was matched, uh-huh. which was the big thing for me. That's uh, yeah. any sort of VR game. Like, that's that's ruined for me before is is if the scale is bad and you get in there and like the people are like eight feet tall it like yeah, really yeah, yeah. like crushes yeah, the yeah, experience yeah, like, for you. Yeah. really breaks the level of immersion yeah so it's, we have i have my computer pulled up and i, I think we uh, we should probably show this little 28 second clip real quick um so before we get into this clip nick go ahead and show the computer and uh, i just wanted to ask this question is that the opry house there in the distance Yes. Okay. Which would not have been there in 1970. It's just kind of there for like reference, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes Great. sense. It wouldn't have yeah. been there in 1972. It opened yeah. in 1974. Yeah. yeah. So, Stuart, you play the clip, and All then right. Ryan, just kind of walk us through what we're seeing here. If and you need me to pause it, let me pause it. Yeah, and, and then we'll go to the uh, the entrance. So, we're coming in over the uh, New Orleans area there. This is the train rolling out of Grinder Switch, which was one of the two train stations. Okay. Um, huh. So, hmm, did they get that uh, the train station idea from Dollywood? I think they would have predated Do- Dollywood, would they? Uh, Dollywood would have had it in the fifties, I think. The train because uh, it wasn't called the, Dollywood in the fifties. No, it was called no, no. Silver, it was Silver, Silver Dollar, Dollar City. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then we there's also the entrance. I believe there's a little. Is there a video of the entrance way in there? Yeah, I think or, at the very bottom of that yeah, first page. Uh, I remember seeing that. I saw it on Instagram. I couldn't remember if it was on the the website or not. And you know, it's funny is I've never been there, but it's very cool to see still um, because it reminds me a little bit of uh, Grand Old Opry in the way that they've designed the mm-hmm. the entrance in that area of the Grand Old Opry. So here's a here's a clip of. It looks like you recorded yourself in the immersive environment. Right. That's just a screen screen grab from the uh, from the Oculus. This is recorded yep. inside the Oculus, just the home screen. All right. So there's the the entrance to the park. So that would have been like the front gate, and then mm-hmm. to the right, there's like a ticketing booth area where you where you buy 
by the tickets for the park in the Opry. Okay. Because you could walk through that little area there, I guess, and the um, there would have been Opry Plaza right there. Mm-hmm. And then, um, the Opry House would be kind of to the right of, like, that main gate or directly behind what we're looking at right there. Okay. Yeah, I think I even think about it now. I think I know exactly where this is near the mall. Right. Yeah, and um, I'm trying to think if... Uh, there's there's a little like if you're at the mall and mm-hmm. you're to walk from the mall to the Opry House, there's a little um, crosswalk there. Yes, yes. And that crosswalk, I could pull it up on a map and show you, but it's uh, it's exactly where that lattice structure. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's, that's exactly okay. where I was envisioning. Where okay, it was. yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's cool. That uh, makes a lot. But of I sense. walk on that <laughs> sidewalk more than most people. <laughs> so. Um, actually, let me go ahead and throw up Google Maps real quick and get. Uh, we have a character that we've made here on the podcast. His name's uh, <laughs> Greg, the Google guy. Yeah, and, and so uh, he's our little calendar man. And he he uh, he goes in and and finds these locations for us, and <laughs> and uh, we drop them in by parachute every now and again to go and find these spots. Oh, yeah, that's so awesome. Let me. Um, all right, so Greg is going to be on a. So Nick, let's bring in the map here. Let's scroll over a little bit to the to the opera house left to the left towards okay. the mall. Okay, okay. See that? Yeah, that yep, that's that right walk there. over in the top so left hand right corner. Here. Yep. Yeah. So the opera house would be right here. <laughs> Let me see if I can get Greg down on the street. So I'm fairly certain oh, those those sidewalks fantastic. those sidewalks back behind it were still there. Yeah, yeah, were part which of the park, would, which would make sense. Um, and then this would have been the main entrance yeah. to the park. Okay. Or yeah, that yeah. So it's, that crosswalk was where the uh, that building was where the ticket entrance yeah, yeah. Was, was right sitting on top of that crosswalk. Yep. All right. Well, that makes sense. So um, go ahead, Aaron. Right. The, the, I, I think what was really cool is I saw your stuff on Instagram and then all of a sudden I saw that every news outlet was sharing this and every Facebook page was sharing this. And, uh, so I think, uh, a lot of attention was brought to this when you started the Instagram page and started showing people the environment. And then also, uh, I feel like you had to prove that you on that page, there are probably a ton of people who are like, because uh, this happens all the time when you're creating things about Nashville. People are like, they don't know anything. And so you probably got a lot of hate from like, he's he's never going to get it right. Uh, talk about putting your content out there on Instagram and how it was received and how it may have and how it's affected your project. I, I would assume hopefully in a good way. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely given me a second wind because um, there was kind of a, so I actually tried to kind of put this out there a little bit. Most of the videos I have, um, except for the the one we just saw the the um, of the the custom environment. Yeah. So uh, those other videos on my website I had recorded back in May. Okay, in two thousand two or uh, 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 twenty two. Yep. Okay, cool. And um, because uh, so we had actually a couple of big anniversaries this past year. So. Um, the, the 25th anniversary of the park's closing was December 31st. Okay. And uh, the the 50th anniversary of the first day of the park was in May of this past year. Wow. It was May 27th. Wow. And so that's when I really put it into the Opryland Facebook groups. Um, I hadn't said much before that. I, like, posted maybe a picture of the train, and that was probably the most uh, a tip of the hat that I'd really put out there. Yeah. And so when the... Um, so when I put it out in the Facebook groups, that was um, because Opryland, there were like two pretty good sized Opryland Facebook groups. Okay. And so um, it was it was very well received in there as well. Um, the, of course, there there were still a handful of people that were like, uh. and that's when you're that's when you're like, hey, here's some pictures to show. Like I grew <laughs> up at this park for a little bit. Like yeah, I yeah. like there's 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 this is this is like a qualified thing for me to do kind of thing right um yeah because uh, that was the other thing i wanted to have something decent to show something that looked you know and and that's why like even though all most of the buildings in that first video you saw were just uh placeholders they're just like um little building blocks but um the, the the like the overall layout and structure like the people that worked there and the people that really truly remember it they they saw that and they it um, I think it got some people definitely very excited. Yeah. Um, especially since like I've, I've just done all this by myself and it's not like I have like a full studio behind me. Yeah. Um, 
<clears throat> which I do have a, a little bit of help now. Um, Tennessee Tech um, iCube, which is a, a STEM program that they have out there. They are uh, they they volunteered some of their oh that's awesome programmers. Yeah, they've got a, a few amazing. students that are um, looking for a, a project this semester, and so uh, so yeah, I've got. Um, two or three students out there that are, that are uh, going to be helping me. We've been trying to figure out exactly where in the project they want to help. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. That's amazing. That's exciting. So I, I was going through your Instagram, and this photo stood out to me immediately. Nick, if you could show this real quick. This is really cool. Did you make this, or did somebody else make this this image that we're about to see? So uh, as you can see, there's the, the mall, there's the Opryland, there's the, the, all of it, the parking lots, all of it's yeah, there. So Opryland's overlaid on top yeah, of the There's the, the Grand Ole Opry, but then Opryland is overlaid over the entire parking lot. This photo is fantastic. This is an amazing resource. And so I, I actually started with an earlier version of this. Uh, this was drawn by uh, Michael Parham, who I was talking okay. about, who's, yep. who runs the, the Opryland Memories Group. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, this this is just a, a really stellar recreation. Um, because when when I started, and it was uh, he, I'm curious. I haven't talked to him to to ask exactly how he did this, but I'm curious if he used something similar to how I did, where I've like satellite imaging. I pulled up a satellite image. Um, okay. Because I I didn't even know that those existed until I saw just like a clip of like, I just saw like a little tiny image of something by the mm -hmm. Grizzly river. And I was like, where did they find that? And so I, <laughs> I got, I got to look at, I just dug, dug in the internet until I found a, a site that sold historic aerial photographs. Oh, wow. And so nice. I, I bought them. And, uh, so I've got one from 1980 and one from 1997. Wow. That's so crazy. I really got to, you know, it was really kind of like closer to the starting point and the finish point. So yeah. Wow. Really a lot of reference there. So how, how much longer, like how much of the park do you have done? Um, so really not not way too much more than I have shown in that, okay. in that first video. I, I say that. I probably have done a little bit more because I've been working on uh, Dua Diddy City, which is like mm -hmm. the, 50, the 50s area over there. So um, I have kind of a lot more of that done that I've shown. But um, that's, that's going to be my next custom environment that I drop. So uh, I didn't want to – I'm trying to find a, a balance to walk between – showing people the progress and not, you know, spoiling the surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Because cool. ultimately you want people to experience it in VR. Yeah. yeah. And and speaking of experience it in, in VR, uh, we are going to – the the environment that uh, of the entrance is available for people to experience right now. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. That's, so they can download it on your website, right? Yes. Uh, OpulandVR.com slash download. Here, I can show that. So, Nick, go ahead and uh, show my screen one more time. So, you just click this download button right here. Yep. If it loads. And there you are. All right. So, not only are you able to download this, we're going to, uh, Stuart's going to demonstrate uh, what he sees in the environment. And so, Stuart's putting on the VR goggles oh, wow. right now. I can hear some of the music playing in the background. Um, and so, Stuart, you're going to grab the grab am the I hands. Holding, am I holding them my hands the right way? I think okay. Backwards. All right. So there you go. Nice and then, Stuart, give some commentary on the environment that you're in. We saw it earlier on the screen, but now, Stuart, you're experiencing All it right, in real so life. I, I am in the entrance of Opryland where we just showed where Greg the Google guy was. Uh, and I'm looking at the signed Opryland. It's really amazing to see all these stars. I wish Nashville we can see all those stars <laughs> all the time. Stuart, what what is um, it like to you know? Because we weren't here when Opryland was here. So what is it like, you know, it, being a, being able to be in a city in its past time? It feels incredible. I can't wait to like start mapping Nashville with the entire city. <laughs> this is going to be fantastic. Uh, what's really interesting is, uh, Ryan, do you remember if this was the music that was being played during the time? Or? So this is an open source, or sorry, uh, a public domain uh, song taken from the Library of Congress. I'm not 100% uh, percent sure if this played, but it, it, it very well you, could have. It fits in really well. So, yeah, see, I'm looking at the sign right now. I see a bunch of ticket booths where you would walk in. Uh, I wish we could see that many stars in Nashville, so I'm just going to go around real quick. Uh, there's that building to the right. Was this like um, the ticket booth area where you buy the tickets, Ryan? Yes. Okay. Uh, now I'm just going to go. Oh, there's a little sign that has, like, all of your information about, like, what's happening in the park. That's really cool. Stuart, does it feel like you're in the Opryland area? 
It does. It, it like right where that entrance, that sidewalk is. It yeah. feels like I'm walking towards the mall right now. Wow. So it, it's really cool, Aaron. I think you need to try this too. Yeah, I I, I will try it for sure. We'll we'll do that after the show. Um, Ryan, what was your when you put it on for the first time? Um, and and it was like it was to scale. It was like how you liked it, it was like this. What were your thoughts? Oh man, it, it was it was really unbelievable being able to. Um, that that seal, feeling of satisfaction of of having worked on it for so long and to put it on and it actually yeah. look right and it feel it felt right like that um that was that was huge that was um an unparalleled the uh i would say going back to it uh, about my dad putting my dad in there when my dad started to say he was like oh yeah he's like the opry house would have been right there and if you go through there the and he yeah. started just like walking me through the park, like as if he were standing in it. It yeah. was like it was really that was surreal. That was probably bigger than any moment of putting myself <laughs> in it. So, Stewart hit the mic with the Oculus. All right, Stuart, are you staying in there? Uh, no, I think we'll get out. But Ryan, I, I want to ask one thing. So a lot of this is extremely detailed. How many hours do you think you put into this? So, oh, so this custom environment, I probably spent about two or three weeks on. Okay. Um, yeah, this is amazing. It's about the the file is only about twelve megabytes. It's uh, is it really? It's only twelve megabytes. Wow, mm. it's huh. like four or five image textures stretched across all of all of those. Oh my gosh, okay, that's I was incredible. Like, I, I didn't know the size of these things. I was like, this probably has to be a gigabyte, but it's not. Okay, what, what is is? Uh, all right, I'm gonna get out of this. If somebody <laughs> wants to get <laughs> oh, my <laughs> There, Ryan, there may be a lot of people who are thinking, you know, oh, well, VR, like that's such a hard thing to do. It's such a new shift of, of things to do. And, and you know, but they may have never thought, oh, it's possible to actually experience some stuff, especially somebody who uh, may be older and, and have been to Opryland and spent some time there. You know, they probably didn't maybe didn't know that something like this was possible. What is the best way that somebody can um experience this or like oh okay i think i actually want to try that now what's the best way to start getting into that world is it hey just bite the bullet get an oculus and then just start messing with it and having fun what what do you recommend yeah the the um oculus is a great tool because uh, it's very easy to to develop on um, i think i think several of the headsets and i'm not 100 percent sure because i haven't i haven't tried a ton of them i've I had playstation vr before this one okay um but uh, i think some several of the pc vr headsets are fairly easy to develop on even just to experience is, is what's what's an easy one to um to to get maybe as a first time experiencer no oh, i'd say the oculus is okay. definitely a great one because great. you don't have to be tethered to a pc but you can uh connect it to a pc to like a gaming um so you, you can run like a gaming pc powered vr onto this oh okay yeah that's what rapid vr does yeah but i don't think their models is the oculus maybe no, they have yeah something they, they, they have the probably the commercial ones they're they're fantastic um but i do remember one story from the rabbit hole vr um since we were releasing this video soon they they have like the interactive Google Maps thing. Have you done that yet? Um, uh, yes, yeah, I've yeah. seen those. Those are wild. So they, they were saying uh, that there was this woman that came in and she put the VR on. She looked for her childhood home and she hasn't seen it in like fifty years. And she did that with Google Maps and she was standing right there in front of her childhood home. She like the people are telling us that like just tears are running down her face. So it's like those memories can be very important to people. Oh yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, um, Ryan. What are your your goals with this? Um, as far as your personal goals for this, any kind of commercial goals for this, any kind of um, just goals as far as what you want people to experience out of what what do all those really look like for you? So uh, I think I think my biggest goal is um, just to put this in as many hands as possible, um, and really. The way I've thought about doing that, because I've um, originally really was trying to keep this as small as possible, and um, I, I still think that I can do that. I, th I think um, the best route for me, and what I've been kind of working on the past few weeks, I haven't really put anything out there on, but um, I really like the idea of doing this as a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think there's there's a lot there's a lot of potential to be had for. Um, going back to what you're saying about older communities mm -hmm. and older people, like because 
Um, this is something that, you know, my mom and dad might put on a VR headset to experience, but, you know, it's not like my, my parents in their 60s are going to be playing Beat Saber. No. You know? no. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's very rare that the people who experience Opryland are going to be buying Oculuses a lot. You know, their, their grandkids may have them or their kids may have them, but as far as them, they might not purchase an Oculus just for that experience. So being able to take that experience to them right. it sounds very cool. Yeah, and uh, because going back to it, yeah, like I'm sure like a lot of people my age have VR and they might try this out. They're like, oh man, that's great. They're like, hey, mom and dad, do you remember this? And then, you know, their mom and dad don't necessarily have to buy a headset, but they'll be able to experience it still with their kids, you know, hmm. maybe try to bridge some generational gaps there. What would be really cool too is if you can have like a little booth inside of Opryland Hotel uh, or like the Opry Mills Mall, just have a little booth and be like, hey, this is what used to be here. <laughs> That would be really cool. Yeah. The um, Do you know if you're the only one in the country right now, like, building, like, an old, old theme park in the virtual reality? Someone told me that the that there was a young lady doing Astrodome, oh, Astro, okay. Astro World in Texas. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, okay. I, um, so I, haven't, I haven't looked into that too much. Um, but, yeah, it would be interesting to connect with her and to see, oh, yeah. see what that project looks like. What do you want people to, I mean, you, you have goals with this project, but also what do you want people to know about this? Like if, if somebody's like, I don't really know a whole lot about this. What, what is the thing that you're like, well, I really hope that you, you know, know this when you're done hearing about the story of what you're doing. Yeah. Um, really, I, I just want people to know that, um, I want people to know that Opryland was an important part of this town's history. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of it was kind of the end of the era of like the company man if you think about that mm -hmm. like back back in the day it was it was easier for you know like my granddad worked at Pirelli and that was like a big it was it was like um you know the company it was back in the day when companies took took care of people pretty well and uh no i just uh yeah when i hear so many times from people who um who never went to Opryland or who just have been to the mall or the hotel. And they, they say something along the lines of, uh, well, if, if the hotel was really so great or sorry, if the mall or if the, the if Opryland yeah. was really so great, it, it wouldn't be a mall be, right yeah. now. And, uh, I've just heard so many transplants say that for so long that it, it you know, um, I just, I want people to, not say that anymore. <laughs> uh, I have a, you can put on the headset and then and you'll find and out. You'll find out. Um, so there's been talks and rumors of another theme park coming to Nashville. Besides Storyville. Be besides Storyville. Yeah. Um, have you heard of Storyville? The theme I've, park? I've heard of Storyville. I, I'm, I'm not sure that I'd seen anything on it. That, uh, there's, oh. not, there's not much information about okay. it yet. Um, but there's been other rumors of other theme parks potentially coming to this area too. What are your thoughts on a new theme park coming to Middle Tennessee? Well, I think we definitely need something family friendly in Nashville because that that was one of the big things. It was uh, such a, a family destination, mm -hmm. and now, and I wait tables downtown. So, um, because I, you know I, this this is just a passion project. This doesn't pay my bills by any means. This has honestly been something I've poured a lot of time and yet. effort and some money into. But um, yeah. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, going back to it, that's, that's why I really wanted to form that nonprofit so that when people contribute to this project, that it's something that they can put as a, like a tax write off. Mm -hmm. Um, because that, that's how, like, I, I really don't want, I don't want to run as like a corporation and be in a position where I have shareholders on one side of me and the Opryland community mm -hmm. on the other side and the shareholders are expecting me to milk this community for everything it's worth. And I'm, I'm not going to do that. I, yeah, yeah. That's why I've, um, I like the idea of releasing everything for free, and so far I've done that. Mm -hmm. um, and if anybody wants to contribute, I do have a section on my website. Hey, let me uh, pull it up real quick. I keep I keep talking about it though. Um, but yeah, the uh, Nick, you can go ahead and pull up the website. There we go. How is this? Oh, this is must be the um, oh the contribute on the thing. Is it a Patreon page? Oh, on the um, on the actual website, like I have on the first page, there's when you click on um, instead of clicking contribute, I've changed the format of it a little bit. Okay, let me back up. 
So if you click reconstruction at the very top. Reconstruction, okay. So this has all of my um, patrons there. That's everyone who's contributed nice. to the project in 2022 and 2023. Uh, awesome. And um, so there's also if, um, yeah, going back, if the contribute button there, mm -hmm. that, that's where you can actually fill it out and it uh, submits it through Stripe. So it's like a kind of common online nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. payment process. <laughs> we've, yeah, yeah. we've really liked Stripe lately. Yeah, we've used it. We've used it lately. <laughs> it's been one of our favorite billing platforms. <laughs> so, That's handy. Yeah, it, it really is. So, Ryan, where can people follow you and learn more about the project? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Instagram is where I have probably the most consistent um, presence. Uh, got a little over 3,000 followers on there, which is amazing, uh, especially considering um, before December I only had like 80 followers. Yeah. Wow. It was wow. just, it was that's, just my that's, personal that's Instagram. Growth. It was, it was insane. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was a, there was a, a, a meme page, uh, called music shitty. I'm not sure. If oh you yeah. 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 Um, we, we were f familiar with it. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, I, I saw one of their stickers They They were selling a sticker that said, uh, music shitty. We miss Opryland. And, uh, so <laughs> I reached out to them and kind of explained what I was doing because that's part of my problem is just nobody's seen it. And it's so yeah, yeah. hard to cut through the noise in this town. Yes. Um, it really took, I mean, uh, I coordinated and tried to do as much as I could to, um, to hit that mark when the 25th anniversary of the park closing was rolling mm -hmm. around because yeah. I knew that was, that was going to be a date that it would be in the media anyway. Yeah. And this was one of those, it was an opportunity for me to take a moment that would have been just a really sad and hopeless moment for Nashville and to give it a positive spin and give us mm -hmm. some hope. Awesome. Yeah. So Instagram and then your website's OprylandVR.com. Yes. Awesome. Well, Ryan, Nick, you can hit that outro. Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm excited to try this after the show and see what it's like, uh, but appreciate everything that you've done for that. And uh, when it gets fully built out, oh, man, that's going to be very <laughs> exciting. What are you, quick five seconds, What are which environment are you looking forward to most coming out next? Oh, New Orleans. Ooh. Yeah. I love New Orleans. Right there with the little sky ride coming yeah, out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Be a there you fun. go. Thanks again, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Nashville Daily Podcast. If you want to learn more, head to NashvilleDailyPodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media at Explore.Nash on Instagram, Nashville Daily Podcast on YouTube, and Explore.Nash on YouTube as well. The Nashville Daily Podcast is an Explore LLC production, copyright 2023.